Hi, this is Ruth. I'm one of the naturalists at Beaver Creek Reserve, and today I am at a piece of property known as Schmidt Maple Forest. It's on the Chippewa County, uh, Clark County line, uh, and it was originally owned by the Nature Conservancy and has been taken over by the University Foundation. Uh, we're hoping to find some more of the spring ephemerals out here that you haven't had a chance to meet with Jim and Megan in previous videos. All right, so as we've been walking through the forest, um, we are noticing there is quite a white carpet of flowers uh, on, on the forest floor. And uh, it's one of two flowers that I know. I'm pretty sure I know which flower, but I wanna share with you uh, an app that can be put onto your phone to help you identify things. There are two apps, there's iNaturalist, and then there's one called Seek, which is a smaller version of the iNaturalist. Um, because I have an old phone, I cannot get all of iNaturalist to load up, um, and so I use the one called Seek, S-E-E-K. Um, so I'm gonna open up my apps, and I open up the Seek. Now, Seek does realize that I am near Stanley, Wisconsin, and so what it does is, I know you can't, you won't be able to really see this because of the way the sun is, um, but there's a little camera down here. So I'm gonna hit the camera, and once that opens up, it's gonna be scanning. So I'm gonna come down here by this flower, and once it gets a look at it, it tells me that it's false rue anemone, which is what I was suspecting because of the deep uh, leaf, uh, the deep cuts in the leaflets. The rue anemone does not have the, the deep cuts into the, into the leaflets like that. Um, now, I can also come along here and I can take a picture of it, and it adds it to my uh, things that I've found. It's kind of like a hide and seek or a, like a challenge type of a game uh, that's attached to this app. It's powered by National Geographic, uh, and it happens throughout the world. So it's kind of a fun app to have, and it helps identify uh, quite a few of the plants that we might see in and around us in the woods. All right, so we have found a little uh, bush-like plant here in the forest. Uh, it is probably about two feet high, and the flowers are uh, gathered in this ball on the top. Um, there's several little balls in here. Uh, now, because it's a spring ephemeral, remember, ephemeral means short-lived. The um, We only see them for short times each year. So my memory doesn't always work that great. And so I'm thinking this is either um, baneberry or blue cohosh. I'm leaning towards baneberry, but I'm going to double check it with that app again. So I'm going to open up Seek, and I'm going to point it at the plant. And I'm going to let it scan it. It's saying the same thing. It's either a baneberry or cohosh. It couldn't do exact species. So it got as far as I did. But like I said, I suspect that this is red uh, baneberry. Now, iNaturalist is a little bit better at that. It would probably pick the species off better, but again, with my old phone, I wasn't able to load that particular app onto this phone. Let's go see what else we can find. So sometimes when you're doing wildflower walks, you gotta kinda watch uh, what's going on. Because if you were to look at this uh, area of flowers right here, it sorta looks like we have those false through anemone again, but then we look like, oh, this one has pink blossoms. Well, they're not the same. If we carefully follow this pink blossom down to the ground, we will find it's attached to these kind of fine leaves. This is spring beauty. Uh, so sometimes you get a, a carpet, a forest carpet going on, you can get multiple blooms looking like they grow together. You just gotta be a little careful so that you aren't saying, oh, I saw a false ruin enemy with pink and purple flowers. So this next wildflower is kind of tiny, so you have to kind of look down here with me. Um, it's this little guy right down here. And we look at the leaves. There are five very distinct looking leaves, and then this little white ball of flowers standing on a stalk. That is dwarf ginseng. Um, dwarf ginseng is a native flower here in our, in our woods in Wisconsin. Um, and so it's just kind of a fun find, but it is a fairly small flower. 
Now one of the things you might notice as we've been going through the woods today is that I don't appear to be on a trail. Um, the Schmidt Maple Forest doesn't really have trails in it. Um, instead of making one trail, they let people kind of carefully wander through. If this was a, a place like Beaver Creek or a place that had trails, then I would definitely be staying on the trails. Um, but today we're just getting to explore uh, through the forest floor uh, as, we as we go. So a lot of times when you're out doing one thing in the woods, you find lots of other things. We've been listening to the birds singing, and then all of a sudden I looked down and saw this little guy hopping by my feet. Now if you take a really close look at him, you'll notice he's got a little black mask around his face. Um, and his back legs will have stripes on them. They're not very dark yet, uh, but they'll get in there. He's not going to get a whole lot bigger than this, uh, but this is a wood frog. Wood frogs are our first frogs that sing in the spring. They're the ones that say, lick it up, 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 lick it up. Um, so they're already done and have laid their eggs and probably have little frogs. Now this frog probably came from last summer. It's not one from this year yet. Uh, it's still a little on the small side. Cool thing about wood frogs is that they can freeze. Uh, take a chance, if you get a chance, take a look that up. Uh, Smithsonian does a really cool uh, YouTube video on how these guys can overwinter and literally have ice in their body. Um, so again, when you're out in the woods, you can find all sorts of fun stuff besides what you're looking for. So I'm going to take him and I'm going to let him go right down here in this little wet area. And we'll let him go about his business. Never know what you're going to find. All right, this time we found a plant called Jack in the Pulpit. Um, so Jack in the Pulpit is this little guy right here. Now the leaves look similar to trillium. They have the three leaves like a trillium does. But if you look carefully with me, you'll see there's an extra line kind of traced around the edge of that leaf. Can you see that? That line is Jack in the Pulpit. Trillium is missing that line. And then this is the flower of Jack in the Pulpit. So this outer spathe covering is the pulpit. And then inside here, this little guy is Jack. And so a pulpit is from older churches before there were mic uh, microphones and speakers and such like that. The speaker um, would stand up in a covered stand called the pulpit. And that's where the name uh, pulpit comes from. And then for some reason, they decided to call the little guy Jack. I guess whoever named it liked Jack. Jack, or maybe it was Jack. I'm not even entirely sure. Should we go see what else we can find? All right, I think we've stumbled upon one of probably most people's favorite spring flowers, and I think it's because it's big, it's showy, and most people recognize it. Um, it is the Trillium grandiflorum, or the great Trillium. Um, the flower stands upright above the leaves. Now, if you remember, the Jack in the pulpit we looked at had the similar same three leaves. But I remember I showed you the margin on the leaf. On a trillium leaf, if we look carefully, the venation, the veins go all the way out to the edge. Where Jack in the pulpit, there was a kind of a trail around the edge of the leaf that didn't have the venation going through it. Uh, and so if you're just seeing the leaves, uh, that is one of the things that will tell you the difference between trillium and Jack in the pulpit. Uh, this year, the trillium to me seemed kind of small. And I am suspect it's because we had kind of a cold, slow spring. Uh, it kind of stunted the growth a little bit and it delayed them a little bit. So they're, they're blooming a little smaller than they do some years. Um, now sometimes people will see them uh, and they'll see pink ones. I'll get questions about whether or not they saw trillium. As trillium age, they quite often do turn kind of a pinkish color. It's not a separate flower, it's just an old flower. So again, probably one of everybody's favorite spring flowers. As we continue on our walk here at Schmidt Maple Forest, uh, we are finding another uh, spring ephemeral, spring flower. A lot of us are familiar with the purple violet. There is also a yellow violet. Yellow violets tend to be found mostly in the woods and they have to be a rich, moist woods. Uh, so if you look here with me, you can see uh, it looks like a violet leaf, but then the flower is yellow rather than the standard purple ones that we are used to seeing. So whenever you're out in the woods, keep your eyes open because these little guys can hide uh, in underneath other plants. Uh, let's go see what else we can find. 
So we found here a plant. Uh, there are two plants that kind of look similar to this. Uh, if you look at the plant, you can see it's a long stem. Uh, the leaves are kind of alternating. It almost makes the stem kind of look crooked. Um, there are different, there are other differences, but the main difference is the, is the way the plants flower. Um, there is Solomon seal and false Solomon seal. Now this one, it hasn't started to bloom yet, but if you look right here with me, you can see it's going to bloom off of the end. So this is false Solomon seal, or also known as Solomon's plume, um, because of the, the fluorescence or the flower is going to make a, a, a poof coming off the end of the plant. Solomon's seal has the individual flowers will come down uh, near the nodes or the joints of the, of the leaves and will hang down. Uh, but they're both uh, native flowers here uh, in Wisconsin. Um, and it's just, it's a very interesting uh, plant. It's a very interesting uh, leaf pattern. Uh, a lot of people uh, like it in their, in their gardens. Um, and so it's kind of a, it's a fun one to, to find. Let's go see what else we can see. Our last find as we are heading out back out to our car um, is a plant known as wild geranium. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of leaves and uh, it's a little bit early yet, but we did find one plant that had started to bloom. If you look down here with me, you can see the bloom of the wild geranium right here, this purple uh, flower. The leaves are very distinct, uh, very deeply lobed and slightly wrinkly looking. Uh, this is all wild geranium. Wild geranium is also uh, has another common name. Uh, they call it crane's bill. It gets that name because once it's done flowering, it forms a seed pod or a seed capsule that has a long pointy uh, crane bill uh, on it, if for lack of a better term. Um, and so uh, common names sometimes get a little bit confusing because we use different names. Uh, but in this case, uh, that one kind of makes sense if you are seeing the, the seed head. So we had a great walk out here at Schmidt today. Um, hopefully you have a place that you can go out and explore and find some spring flowers of your own.